Imagine there exists a disease for which there's no cure, there's no immunity towards it, and it's always fatal. Except this disease doesn't kill right away. Rather, individuals that are infected with this disease can seemingly live a normal life for a couple years before they ultimately succumb to it. But all the while they have this disease, they're contagious, infecting others both directly and indirectly. Pretty scary, right? All right, well, you can stop imagining now. And you can stop imagining because that disease is real. It exists today. Fortunately, what I'm talking about isn't known to impact humans. What I'm talking about is a disease that affects the central nervous system of members of the deer family, like deer, elk, and moose. And what I'm referring to is something called chronic wasting disease, or CWD. And everything I previously mentioned about this imaginary disease is true for CWD. There's no cure, there's no immunity, and it's always fatal. Now in the latter stages of the disease, the animals look like this. They are a shell of what they used to be. What this image doesn't show, though, is the behavior of that animal. This girl has no idea where she's supposed to be, what she's doing, or what she should be afraid of. It's basically turned her into a zombie. And like a zombie, what causes CWD can't be killed because it's not alive. You see, CWD is caused by something called a prion. And a prion, in this sense, is a mutated protein. And these prions are very different than a, a bacteria or a virus, things you would normally associate an illness or a disease with. You see, bacteria and viruses have nucleic acids. They're living organisms. They, they have a lifespan. Prions don't have a lifespan because they don't have a life. So once these prions enter the body of the animal, they accumulate and they multiply and they attack the brain. This is an image of a brain tissue of an animal that has CWD. And you see those white circles there? Those white circles aren't supposed to be there. Those are holes that have been bored into the brain by these prions. And as you can imagine, once you get enough of these accumulating, your neurological function is going to be severely compromised. Now what's interesting about this disease is how it's transmitted. You see, infected individuals transmit these prions in body fluids. These prions have been found in saliva. So it's easy to see how a deer, which is a very social animal living in small family groups, sharing common food sources, grooming each other, how one individual can, uh, infected individual can pass it on to another. But the real part of this disease that's so insidious is that these prions are also shed in urine and feces. And once that material degrades, the prions remain. And they bind to the soil and they get taken up into the plants. And there they stay for years, even decades, waiting until another animal comes along and picks it up. So in that regard, it's possible for one animal to infect another animal, and they never even lived in the same time period together. And as you can imagine, the more of these animals that have this disease, the more these prions are being shed into the environment where it's accumulating. And more and more animals become infected and they're getting infected at a younger age. And we don't know where this is going, but it certainly sounds pretty grim. Now at this point you're probably asking yourself a question, or, or maybe two. This doesn't impact humans, so why should I care about deer? Well, I'll tell you why I care about deer. You see, to me, deer are more than just an animal. They're a connection with my past. Some of my fondest memories growing up in southern Pennsylvania are getting up early when it's still dark and going out hunting with my dad, my grandfather, meeting family and friends. You see, in Pennsylvania growing up, deer hunting is a tradition. We talk about it all year long, not just when the leaves turn red or gold in the fall. And the answer to your other question is no. You don't have to wear quite that much orange when you go hunting in Pennsylvania. <laughs> but you know what? I don't think I'm the only one that cares about deer. In fact, I, I know I'm not. Did you know that 80% of all hunters in the US today hunt deer? That's about 10 million hunters. And those 10 million hunters have a pretty significant impact on the economy. Their money touches processors, taxidermists, retail stores, gas stations, 
hotels, motels, restaurants, you name it. In fact, a recent survey estimated that deer hunters alone have an estimated multiplied impact of $40 billion each year to the U.S. economy. That's more than the revenue brought in by some pretty major companies last year. I'll tell you one other little secret about deer hunting. The money derived from deer hunting license sales and some of the taxes from deer hunting equipment go to support the management of other species. In that regards, deer hunting is to conservation what college football is to college athletic departments. You see, no money from college football, no money for lacrosse or field hockey, women's softball. No money for deer, you don't have nearly as much money for turkey, rabbits, grouse. So they're kind of a big deal. Which is why this disease is so concerning to me as a biologist. See, we know a lot more about CWD now than we did 10 years ago, but we have a long way to go. And we're learning from states that have been dealing with this for much longer. We're learning from this from states such as Wyoming. Wyoming's been dealing with this for nearly four decades. What we're learning about deer in Wyoming is that CWD is having a 19% annual impact and survival in their South Converse unit. Now granted, some of this area is some of the highest known infection rate in free-ranging deer in the world. One out of every two deer is infected with CWD. Their population has been decreased by one half over the past decade. We're learning about this from states such as Wisconsin. Wisconsin's, I first identified this in 2001. And today they have more positive counties in Wisconsin with CWD than not. In areas in and around their core area, Iowa and Dane counties, are seeing prevalence rates of up to and exceeding 40% for adult bucks. So it is spreading and it is growing. Now I previously mentioned that CWD hasn't, has no known impact to humans. And that's, that's a great news because there's a lot of people looking and they have not found that definitive link yet. But still, the World Health Organization and the Center for Disease Control recommend you don't consume a deer that has CWD. And that's probably because of the family of diseases that CWD is in. You see, CWD is part of a family of diseases called transmissible spongiform encephalopathies. And you may have heard of another disease in that family. It's called mad cow disease. And back in the 1990s, officials in the UK recommended that it was fine to eat beef that may have mad cow because there was no known link. And there are about 200 people that can't argue that claim, and that's because they died from eating that meat. Now, I can't stress this enough. There's no known impact with CWD in humans, but I ask you this. Is absence of proof proof of absence? In this case, let's hope so, because I don't want to know what's going to happen to this deer population if they find that link. So unfortunately, there are a lot of people who tend to minimize the impact of CWD because they don't see the results right away. But looking at other states that have been dealing with this for years, it's clear that something is happening long term. And we need to be proactive and combative with this disease. If you're a hunter, I would ask you to continue hunting, especially in areas with CWD. You are the first line of defense. But get your deer checked. Not only does it help your state agency, understand the spread and scope of the disease, but it also is a great safeguard for your family. But really, if anybody's listening, I would ask you to contact your state agencies, contact your legislators, ask them for more money to be allocated toward fighting this disease, toward preventing the, the establishment of this disease or the introduction of this disease. In doing so, you're taking a step forward for the future of deer, for future generations to enjoy the, these deer, like this guy, and for conservation as a whole. And for that, I thank you.